imperative. It's imperative. It's, the skills that you learn through arts and education are life skills. Can't sleep on it. Cannot sleep on it. Hey, I really appreciate everything you've said, both with cut and with loose questions. Um, you talked about the idea of sort of taking what's mainstream and flipping it and making it your own with both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of the sort of themes that comes up on the album that uh, is sort of a flip of the way we see things in the mainstream, uh, there are several tracks that challenge the traditional view of women's empowerment and offer a gospel-centered alternative. So talk us through some ideas of what effective empowerment vacation of women's voices looks like in our space. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, it, there's a lot of ways to go about tackling this particular question, you know. Um, I think it's a matter of showcasing what womanhood is, but I truly believe that that is a sub that's can be subjective, right? It depends on your experiences and how you grew up and things like that. So my take on womanhood and what it means to be a woman, um, is going to be a lot different from other people, which, which is why we love diversity, right? Diversity of thought and diversity of minds, which I think is kind of being faded away a little bit. seems like everybody wants to have the same kind of view. And if you don't think like this, then you are, you're not accepted or you get canceled or whatever the case is. Yo, so understanding that I came from a household where my mother was in her 50s when she adopted us and pulled us in, you know, um, she was uh, an avid churchgoer, Kojic, so, you know, wearing skirts er all day, every day, stuff like that. I mean, I didn't wear skirts every day, but for church, always dresses, um, always modesty, 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 you know, had a slip on, you know, um, Put your put your legs together, you know, make sure, you know, you're not sitting like a, a guy, you know, um, uh, and just carry yourself in a certain way in which it's respectful. So that's where I'm coming from now. Of course, you know, there's views that, you know, what why does that mean that that's a woman? If you know, if I want to sit like a certain way or whatever, I should be able to do that. Hey, it's actually facts you can really do whatever you want to remember we do have freedom of choice we have free will but as for me like there's a like looking back on the way that my mother raised us especially my sister me and my sister um and how we handle ourselves as women to be respected to be go-getters um to to you know be carry ourselves gently but also firm um, looking people in the eye and, and just, you know, just straight up, just be respectful. You know, um, I appreciate it. And, and, and I hold on to that. Then we also have examples in the Bible of women who were respected. Um, you know, you have your Esther, you have your Ruth, you have some really like substantial women who carried themselves in a certain way. They, were they perfect? No. Um, but they they were they showcased the beauty that was um loud enough to be spoken about in the bible right and then you have like proverbs 31 woman which everybody say that yeah, most women and then a lot of men say that they want a woman like that or uh, most women want to subscribe or or ascribe to become um when i really like look at proverbs 31 woman I think people may get it a little twisted, like, you know, I want a woman who's going to be, you know, submissive and just, you know, do this and, you know, stay at home and take care. I don't know who's people are saying those those things, but not, you know, I'm not saying you guys are. But uh, when I look at the script, with at, when I look at the scriptures in there, I see a woman who's a go getter. I really read that. joint. She not she not sitting around twiddling her thumb. She's really going out and getting it and she's getting it for her for the sake of her family. And um, it's, it talks about how her husband and I'm paraphrasing these not the exact words from the scripture, but her husband adores her and like got her back and she brings honor to her family. You know, she's um, doing I believe she's sewing and and then buying land and like whatever her hands are finding to do, she's doing it unto the Lord. And, and like, I think that's, that's womanhood. You know, that's what we should be showcasing. We should lean on the Bible. Like I have my experiences, right? 
my experiences might not be like everyone else's and and I've I've taken that in and, and, and lived it out in the way I would live it out. But leaning on what the Bible says about women, which, you know, some some people might have issues with in certain spaces. But um, that's the way that I look at it. Yo, I'm especially in a space like when it comes to support from men. Um, I, I, I feel like I've been supported really well by guys within this genre. But I know that at times there's women who don't feel that. Um, the way that I look at it is like you, we're your sisters in Christ. Carry us gently in that way. You know, there's talks about how men are, you know, saying or doing certain things in DMs. And some women be doing the same thing. But um, in the CHH space, I think there's a, there's a certain level of respect that we as women um, need to receive and give vice versa men should do the same we're your sisters first and so with that mindset i think that's how it you know that should flow it's for if we're st if we're still talking about womanhood i know i gave a long drawn out answer but yeah that's that's how i feel and i could go on and on about that because it's very important to me um and you know especially within this space but outside of i got a daughter you know want to be an example Thank you for that. Yeah. AI, my favorite aspect of this album is the way it embraces, unifies, and represents all the roles you play, from artist to mother to sister to wife, and the challenges that come with each of those. So what does the balance between all of that look like on a regular, and is there ever a concern that one or two of those roles uh, takes precedent and the others suffer as a result? Yo, all I, all I'm, all I can be is real. <sighs> At times, it looks like a chaotic mess. Just real talk. And, and um, I speak as a woman because that's what I am. Uh, wife, mom, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. It, it it looks really chaotic. And, you know, we walk around with smiles on our face. But we really just want to go to sleep. We really do. We don't want to cook anything and do laundry. We just want to go to sleep. And we don't want to be woken up by little people sometimes, you know. Um but as far as the balance of it, I've learned to embrace a word um, more so like manage, managing it, you know, um, and always being on my toes, just making sure like when times when there's times in which I feel that it's chaotic, taking a pause and like readjusting like, OK, yo, it's like I just had to do this as a matter of fact. Um it's a lot going on right now. We're everybody's at home. Everybody's at home. My husband is upstairs. He's a um, he's a teacher. He teaches fourth graders. My son is thirteen. He is in eighth grade. So my my husband is in the kitchen working with his kid with his kids virtually. My son is in his little office space, the little playroom. He's on his virtual space. My daughter's four and she's climbing on me while I'm trying to do my work. Um, I'm homeschooling her, and I was like overloaded, yo overloaded i had i have contracts i have zoom meetings i have calls i need to make you know and in it as a wife and a mom sometimes you feel like you have to take take it all on and take it all in because you're kind of thinking about everything like well i can't send her upstairs because i don't want to interrupt them so I'll just take care of it here. But I had to readjust because that's chaotic because I can't get my work done. So I had to step back and say, OK, I'm going to have to make a, a sacrifice. I'm going to have to work at a different time. I'm going to have to shift and then I have to communicate. So part of management is communicating with my husband to tell him, hey, look, I'm overwhelmed and I feel like this. And he knows it. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, I'm a bit jealous that you get to focus in and teach your kids. You don't get no interruptions. He gets interruptions by um, my daughter as well. But it's like, you know, I, I have to be honest with my feelings. And I think sometimes we forget to do that because we, we just try to suck it up and do it. And, it could, and that's not good. But it's all about like managing communicating we were able to communicate and then create a schedule so that it can work now i'm not saying that to be like oh we we killing it now 
nah, we, we, we working it out. We moving and shaking. Every day is another day. Uh, some days are really great. Some days are like, oh, shoot, we dropped the ball. But it's, it's a constant um, process and journey, yo. Um, you know, it's management. It's all, it's all about management, trying to manage you. You know. Oh, sorry. So you shared a lot of scars and family trauma on this project, with "Take My Hand" being a record that highlights how that trauma has impacted you and your other siblings. Uh, were you ever wary of your family having feelings about you being so open with the details of them uh, and your parents in your songs? Yes, yes. I think that's one of the biggest fears that I had. Um, so. Um, one one of my projects that I did, it's it's like my it was like my second project, but I call it like my first official one. Severed Threads, Severed Threads was that project that allowed me to just be vulnerable and just go go with it, because what was happening in my life was I was I was being affected by not dealing with my past and the emotions of that and and the issues and the hurt and the pain of it, not having my mother and trying to figure out what that did to me as a grown up, you know, um, how that, how that made me feel as a kid, not focusing on mourning my mother, never mourned my mother, never sat and was like, Oh, you know, like my mom is gone. What does that mean to me? Not until I got in my twenties. And so I had to like really come to a place like, yo, it's imperative for my life and my growth to talk about this. And for me, I had to talk about it through the the only way that I felt like I knew how to. And that's music. And I, Severed Threads is one of my favorite projects because of it. It wasn't a project to put out and be like, yo, y'all, I just dropped this project. You know what I mean? Go go stream it and listen to it. Severed Threads was an opportunity for me to journey and to travel into a space in which I'd never have gone into. And I could I couldn't be fearful about how my family would feel, which was difficult. It took a lot to 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 do that project because I'm like, ah, if I say that, how how are my cousins gonna feel? <laughs> how are my sister gonna feel? You know, how's my mom gonna feel? My adoptive mother. That was a big thing. Like, how, will she feel like her work wasn't enough? She adopted us. She she gave us all she could, and you and like my thoughts were, well. Will she feel like she did it in vain? Will she feel like, like, oh, you felt like that all this time? Like all these things and thoughts go in your mind. And I think that that's what happens a lot with foster children, adoptive children and children that grow, grow up within the system. It's always that feeling of like, oh man, I, I can't talk about how I really feel because I might hurt the feelings of these other people. And I, I just personally feel like, that's detrimental. Like, yo, I was, I was, I was in a dark space, even with Christ. You know what I mean? Like I was in a really, really painful space and I was only able to get through because I had a relationship with God, but I was still hurt. And I'm telling you that going through the process of like, yo, this is what happened to me. This is how I felt. And I, I did the song um, Abandon. I asked my mom questions. Because I'll never be able to ask her questions. She's gone. I have to deal with that. You know, I have to look in the mirror and know, like, yo, I look just like this woman. And and I still feel hurt. Like, man, like, I wish she could be here to see her grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? So... All of that, you know, trying to cope with all of those things. I, I just really think that at the end of the day, you got to live. I have to live. This is my life. The things that happened to me happened. It's my story. 
And it's my story to tell. Now, there's ways in which you go about that. I did go to my adoptive mother and I shared songs.